Good morning, Mount Calvary. Good morning, saints and friends. Good morning to each and every one of you today. And as always, let us give our God some praise. Hallelujah. The psalmist says that this is the day that the Lord has made. He also gave us instructions in his day. He says, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Also, the psalmist says in the 150th Psalm, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. And so therefore, if you woke up with breath in your body this morning, which I'm sure you did if you woke up, then you owe God some praise. Hallelujah. If the Bible says that he breathed his breath into man and man became a living being. So your breath belongs to God. So why not allow us just to give God some praise with the breath that God has already given us? No matter how your day's been, no matter what's going on, you're still breathing. And that's that's enough to give God some praise. Hallelujah. And he didn't ask you to move. He didn't ask you to shake your leg. He didn't ask you to raise your hand. He didn't ask you to do any of those things. All the psalmist says, if you woke up, and which you did, you got breath in your body, which you have, that you ought to give God some praise, and which we will. We need to praise our God at all times. Create space for God to continue to be acknowledged and recognized as for what he is, and that is he's our Savior. And so we just thank God for all of this that he has done for us today. This morning, I'd like to bring our attention to the book of Luke. To the book of Luke, I'd like to bring our attention there, the 22nd chapter, the 47th verse. The Bible says that in the 47th verse, it's discussing about the betrayal of Jesus and discussing about the night when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and then all of a sudden, Judas has come. So let's pick up the story in the 47th verse. While he was still speaking, suddenly a mob came. And one of the twelve named Judas was leading them. He came near Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When those around him saw what was going to happen, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus responded, no more of this. And touching his ear, he healed him. He healed him. My preaching verse will come from the 50th verse, which talks about, then one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. And we know from the book of John in the 18th chapter that that person who cut off the uh, right ear of the servant was Peter. And that the servant's name was Marcus. We read that in the book of John. He gives us the name of the person whose ear had been cut off. But uh, <clears throat> this story is recorded in all four of the Gospels. Therefore, I, I find that it must be very important because it's recorded in all four of the Gospels. John just adds the name and, and who swung the sword. Uh, but we, we see that it, it, it's there for a purpose. And God brought this to me and not but knowing that it really related to certain things within myself that I began to see. And, and God brought this to me and, and wanted me to preach it to everybody else because I know we all need to overcome evil by doing good. Amen. I recall the story of Cain. <clears throat> Whenever he was disappointed because his offering was not accepted. We find that in that story, God says, now, if you do what is right, will you not find acceptance? And he tells him, he says, listen, sin is crouching at the door. And his desire is to have you, but you must master it. In other words, God was saying, listen, if you do good, then you will overcome evil. But if you don't, then evil is more than willing to overcome you. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen to that. That whenever we find ourselves in a situation that where we neglect what God told us to do and we're not doing what he told us to do, evil is always present, as the Apostle Paul says, and it's more than willing to work its way through us. Amen. If you're not doing good, then you're doing evil. So evil is there present and willing and more than willing to work its way through us. Amen. We see in the story that evil had already influenced Judas. It already had prompted him to go and to betray the Lord. And because he was unwilling to stick with the good, evil sat right in and moved him to betray our Lord. But also those that followed Jesus that was there, we find that particularly Peter, Peter uh, was quick with his sword because of the fact that maybe he thought that he needed to protect Jesus or something. But I think he forgot what Jesus had said 
when he said that, you know, you need to pray for your enemies. I think he forgot what Jesus had said that to, to pray for those that despitefully use you. Uh, and so I, I think that Peter did not fully understand what the enemy was trying to do. You see, the story focuses on Jesus' arrest and it, and it centers on Christ being taken away. But the enemy also had another agenda. And the other agenda was to steal the faith of those that followed Christ. In other words, as he said, that whenever you kill the head, the body will die. When the scripture says, if you take away the shepherd, the sheep will be scattered. You see that the enemy's uh, second uh, objective, or I would say even his, one of his main objectives, is to steal the faith of the believer. It's to cause the believer to get offended about something and act in such a way that does not represent the character and nature of Jesus. Hallelujah. When the apostle Paul said in Romans about overcoming evil with good, I'm sure he was going back to the character of Christ, which in the book of Acts said that Jesus went around doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Somebody ought to shout, hallelujah, do good. And so therefore God expects us to do good. In Ephesians it teach us that God had already foreordained good works that we should do in Christ Jesus. And so the, the, the script or the remedy for evil or the mastery over evil is, is all built in us doing good. So many times we don't want to do the good that we know we should be doing. And the scripture says to know good and not do it, that's sin. And so therefore the Peter didn't fully understand that the enemy was also targeting the disciples. You see, the enemy also wanted the disciples to act in such a way that they would represent the nature of who Jesus is and his purpose of why he even come. Somebody ought to just shout hallelujah. Let me just bring it back for a moment. You see, the enemy always try to set up a situation to where he can hopefully allure you to do something that's not God, that's unchrist like I mean, if we just take it back for a moment to Joseph. Now, Joseph worked for Potiphar, and he did a great job, and God was blessing him. But the enemy tried to set up a situation where he's working through Potiphar's wife. And Potiphar's wife wanted some attention. She would set up situations where only her and Joseph would be to, alone together. Now you find that Joseph understood what the enemy was trying to do. And so therefore he understood that he couldn't sin against his master. And more importantly, he couldn't sin against God. And so therefore he removed himself from that situation because he fully recognized that the enemy was trying to trap him. He was trying to allure him into a situation to where he would be disfavorable with his master and disfavorable with God. You see, so many times we've taken the bait and we've walked out and done some things we shouldn't have done while we say we are Christians, but the enemy is luring us out so that the disfavor of God will fall down on us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And we find that this has taken place in this situation. And also, if I go back for a moment, we see that whenever the children of Israel came out of Egypt and they had camped on the plains of Moab, and then Balak, uh, the, the, the king Balak, wanted a curse on Israel, so he went to hire the prophet Balaam, or the false prophet Balaam. Y'all know the story about the donkey speaking and all of this. Well, anyway, Balaam could not curse those people because of the fact that God had blessed Israel. But Balaam did something that the enemy put in his mind to do in order to trap the children of Israel. He told Balak, now look, I can't put a curse on them, but if you can do something that would cause them to fall out with God, then we see that God himself will destroy them. And so therefore they, they, they concocted this plan and they sent out the women of Moab. And the women of Moab allured the leaders and the men out of the group and placed them at the feet of their altars and had them bowing and worshiping false gods. And therefore God's anger kindled and he destroyed the leaders and some of the folk of Israel that had went astray. You see, the enemy knows he can't pluck you out of Jesus' hands. But what he would like to try to do or make you think he can do is to cause you to just jump out of God's hand. In other words, follow a course that God did not ordain. We find here that the apostle Peter, or Peter at the time,
time, he didn't fully recognize the enemy working. And so therefore what he did was he quit and drew his sword. I'm sure he already had his hand on his sword when he asked the question. Because in his mind and his heart, he already had in his mind what he was going to do. Now this story relates to me in one sense. I recall a time, I'm glad I grew past this, but I recall a time when a guy had said something to someone else about me. And man, I didn't like that thing not one bit. Not only was it not true, but I just it just rubbed me the wrong way. And so <clears throat> I would see the guy from time to time. And I would speak, and you know, we talk and everything else. But in my mind, I was saying to myself, man, I tell you what, man, that guy ever say something out of the way to, to me personally, man, I'm just gonna have to just tell him the truth and let him just have it. And so <clears throat> I recall one day I'm standing, another friend of mine, we together, and this guy drives up. And uh, he looks at my friend, and he's just joking around my friend because he, he knows him too. And he says, oh, just get out and just whoop you. And my friend says, oh, come on, man. Not one of both of us standing here, so he's referencing me. And so in my mind, I don't put my hand on my sword. So I'm waiting for this guy to say something that I don't like. And I'm, I'm going to go down through there with the word of God. And I'll tell you, man, it, it was just it was just only like that. And, and so as I'm there and I'm standing there listening, the man's response was, was, was so different and it, and, it, and it shocked me. Because what had happened was when the guy responded, not while the both of us are here, the guy looked at him and then smiled, but then he looked at me and he says, no, nah, I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I ain't going to fight no preacher. I don't mess with no preachers. And God showed me right there in an instance. I was out of character. What would Jesus stand for? I was just like Peter. Had my hand on my knife. Ready to cut. And some of us were just the same way. We're always ready to cut. We're ready to just give a word back. Or, or get the last word in. We're just that kind of folk. But Jesus did something. Like he did for me. He had the God to give a different answer. And whenever Peter cut the man's ear off, Jesus gave a different answer. Because Jesus said, we got to overcome evil with good. Jesus reached down and touched the man's ear. He touched his ear and he healed him. In other words, Jesus was saying, Peter, the flesh profits nothing. You can't defend me in the flesh. You got to walk in the spirit. Even if your life depended on it, your reputation depends on it. Walk in the spirit, you got to represent God. You got to represent what He stands for and who He is. Not just when you want to, but all the time. You got to be a preacher, you got to be a saint, you got to understand the word, you got to walk in the word in season and out of season. You got to do what does say it the Lord. And God showed me the enemy was laying a trap. Why did the enemy lay a trap? Because he knew he can't take. Because Jesus has already saved you. But if he can just get you to be ineffective, if he can just embarrass you, if he can just make you do something, that folk will say, I thought you was a preacher. I thought you was a Christian. If he can just do something to make your witness bad, if he can just lay the trap and make you do things that are not godly, then he knows he's got a victory. He's got one last person to worry about. Because now you're too embarrassed to say anything about God. You're too embarrassed to live to go to church now. But whenever you walk in God's way and know you can trust God, then you can bless those that curse you. You can pray for those that despitefully use you. You can do all of those things because you're trusting in God and not in your soul. And so therefore God, oh man, God really was showing me Son, you got to walk in the spirit of God because there are those out there that already doubt your walk and they're looking for a way to trap you and to prove their point already. And whenever they, the, the devil lays these traps, he just wants us to be ineffective. He lays a trap and it takes, he might take a long time to build it. But when he builds it, he understands your character. He knows that the pride of life 
will, will, will halt to us. He knows that the lust of the eye, he knows how to use that. And he knows how to do all of these sinful things because he's been a sinner from the beginning. And he knows that the flesh in us is always trying to satisfy itself. And therefore the devil would lay that trap. But Jesus didn't fall for the trap. Because if he had a fell for the trap, then he would definitely be a transgressor. He understood God's purpose for his life. That his life belonged to God. See, that's our problem. We're just like Peter. We think our life belonged to us. And so, saints, this morning, I hope this word found you where you are because it's so easy. Oh, it's so easy for the flesh to try to tangle us up. But we've got to continue to, to follow the Lord. And I thank God for that lesson that he gave me because then I come to realize after that guy said that, man, I don't mess with no preachers now. That's a man of God. But in my heart, I wasn't thinking like a man of God. And so, therefore, God taught me that. And I want to share that with you out there. That, listen, you are a servant of the Lord no matter what happens in life. You still got to do good. Because doing good will overcome evil. And when we don't do the good or refuse to do the good, evil begins to overtake us. God bless you this morning, saints. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining. God bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.